Good evening, world. Welcome to episode 42 of Talkback Tech, recorded Tuesday, the 27th of September. Talkback Tech is a show where the listener, which would be you guys, decide what we talk about. We do this show live Tuesday nights from 7. <laughs> 7 <laughs> being like, you know, ideal, 8 being usual. Uh, Live.thesecrethub.com. You can be part of the show in a few ways. You can email me on tbtsecrethub.com. You can Skype me on ATH Calling. You can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Tomkinson, M R T O M K O N S O N, and or Aussie TBT if you want to do that. Uh, and visit the Talkback Tech homepage on talkbacktech.com. Uh, all the <coughs> excuse me RSS information is available there um, for the the Talkback Tech podcast and also the Android podcast. Or you can search for Talkback Tech on iTunes and the Listen app on Android. And also there is a Talkback Tech Facebook fan page, apparently, that I keep forgetting to update. Uh, so go there and check that out. Uh, I'm your host, Will. Steve is not with us tonight, but we do have Frosty, Michael, Frosty, um, you. I'm you back. <laughs> He's alive. I'm here. How you been? Yeah, good. Busy at work. You know how it is. Yes, I do. Which is part of the reason that we start <laughs> whenever. <laughs> and the podcasts keep going up Monday night. Sorry about that. I've really got to get around to doing that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so, you people who listen uh, live and watch live, get the get the premiere event and everyone else gets the encore a week later <laughs> it's not deliberate that will change <laughs> it's just been a a thing and it probably won't change for the next few weeks but it annoys me i'd really like to get them up tuesday or wednesday nights so hopefully we can do that so it's been an interesting week in tech um there's been as we didn't find out till tonight. Uh, Hangout has changed their layout. Um, it's they've had a drastic update. Yeah, it um, did something. <laughs> they've changed the layout of everything. Everything's it. It I quite. I mean, it's a nice layout. You've got a bit more flexibility. You can share your screen. You can share apps. You can share Google Docs. Um, things like that. The downside is for what we do uh, with the screen capture and everything like that, the way it's laid out makes it a little bit interesting, but we've had harder things to get around before. <laughs> so so that's one change. Uh, Where there's a will, there's a way. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Also, Facebook has had a major haul, overhaul, as opposed to just a haul. Um, some people like it, some people hate it. What do you think of it? Not a real fan. <laughs> <laughs> not, no, a, not exactly the <laughs> best update. I've seen better. Look, for, for me, for what I do with Facebook... Um, I actually really like it. It's, the layout works for me. Um, it puts people I communicate with more regularly up the top, which is good. And all my stories are still there. They're just in the timeline like they normally would. Um, and then of course, over in this corner, you have hiding over here you have um your normal sort of timeline that you but it's more like twitter in the sense that it um updates instantaneously what timeline hey i don't have that on the top right yeah don't you have oh uh, you must I've have got... that don't i've you got have the that? top stories and the recent stories and all that but on the side, I've got create an event, photos. So it should be bumped Such that. and such was tagged. 
because when you when it rolls through you can hover over it and it'll bring up the article of whatever it may be Sorry. It's just got friends' photos over there. Yeah. You mustn't have the full update yet. Oh, what browser are you using? Chrome. Hmm, okay. I don't know. Maybe you haven't got the full rollout yet. But um, for me, I quite like it. I think the layout's really nice. Um, makes everything easy to access. As I said, and I, I really love this. This the instant news feed thingy on the on the left here so I don't know but um hmm but yeah so you know a lot of people don't like it because the, I'm just sharing it with you through um yeah the new feature through the new um, feature yeah hang out if you press Control Plus on your keyboard, you'll actually zoom that your Chrome screen in. Yep. So it'll it'll pick the resolution up a bit. So we'll be able to to be able to see that. You can go again. So, but yeah, you, you don't have far. it. You've got half of the layout. <laughs> I'm not really sure yeah. what's going on there. So I've got I've got the top stories and the recent stories, but I've got um, friends' photos on the side. Hmm. How bizarre. Maybe <sighs> nobody. <laughs> Maybe it's in the settings <laughs> somewhere. Um, I I haven't dived too deeply into it, so yeah, I, I didn't even know. know that that was a feature on it. I just logged in and it was there. Yeah, just logged in and. This was the first thing I th I saw. I thought, "Hey, that's that's awesome," um, because it's. Well, I usually use um iPhone to do all my Facebook interactions and that. See, I know. And um, that's been updated. Mm. They have the same timeline as what the website's got. Yeah, I was going to say the um Android apps the same. It's been updated, um, and it's. A very similar sort of layout to this so yeah I don't know it's a little bit a little bit peculiar but we shall see I suppose the, mm. uh, the people watching the stream it seems to be wigging out I'm sorry I don't know why <laughs> now that we've got that out of the way um, no I think the stream's going fine at the yeah moment. it just seems to wig out occasionally but Oh well, um, but yeah. So, talking of um, what were we just talking about? Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's been a long day. Um, I do know that your hangout has frozen. Let me just refresh that. Um, there's been a lot of posts kicking around on Facebook about payments and going to a paid system and they're not <laughs> basically you, you you can even look on the facebook blog um there is no intention to charge for facebook look i dare say at some point in the future they may but it's certainly not something that's going to happen in the near future um and I mean, they charge for um, like ads and things like that. So they make enough money. I mean, it's not like they need to anyway. Um, but it's it's one of those things. It seems that as soon as you put, oh, this was in the news on something, then suddenly, you know, it must be right. Um. So I'm not really sure. I've lost your will. Yeah, I'm just refreshing. Just refreshing. Oh, there you are. Mm. Um. 
Yeah, so I'm not really sure what's what's going on. I don't know why people insist on reposting things about Facebook being, you know, charging for it. They won't, and and the re- reason they won't is because things like MySpace, although all, all but dead, are still around. Um, and now that Google Plus is is come out, it's it's more of a threat than any of the other services to Facebook. Um, so even if they were considering it they won't do it because people won't pay and the va- vast majority of those people will just go somewhere else <laughs> so yeah I don't know stop reposting things although I, I do quite like a couple of my friends have put ones up saying Facebook will begin you know, stealing your undergarments at midnight tonight if you don't copy and paste this message. And, uh, you know... I've seen a few of those getting around. Things like that. So, if anything, I think they're more truthful than... Um, what's what's the other one I like? Facebook will charge you... I'm just trying to find it. Facebook will initiate um, payments to you if you don't stand on your table in your underwear and sing the Macarena or something. <laughs> yeah, here we go. On September 31st, Facebook will start charging you for, you for your account to avoid this. You must get naked, stand on your dining room table and do the Macarena. <laughs> you know, I think those sort of things are, uh, are more <laughs> true. <laughs> so, just be wary whether it be Facebook, whether it be Twitter, whether it be G+, whether it be some of the news sites, make sure you vet your stories. In other words, don't just take it from one place and assume it's true. If you see something that seems interesting or you may consider or must be factual, check it out first. You know, Do some research. Um, I know the expression due diligence gets overused and gets flogged to death. But it's true. In cases like that, you know, think about it a little bit, and if it doesn't make sense, check it out. So. Also on the login page for Facebook, it says sign up. It's free and always <laughs> will be. Yeah. Although I have to admit, who goes to the login page? I mean, when was the last time you had actually signed into Facebook? <laughs> I know. Oh, I know a couple of people that um, use multiple accounts on the same computer. Ah, so, okay. <clears throat> See, that issue is different. When we had that, when I we never, did I never logged out, though. No. And, <laughs> I mean, this is part of the reason of the whole, you know, my Facebook account got hacked. Well, your Facebook account didn't get hacked. Somebody logged into your browser and went to Facebook and it auto-signed in. I mean, <laughs> that's not exactly <laughs> hacking your account, you know. So, it is good policy to... um it is good policy to you know <laughs> log out and not save your passwords but who does that <laughs> you know if I, I had to... pass yeah but still when it Auto- pops up in the browser automatically it... logs me in yeah exactly and when it pops up in your browser it says do you want to save this password well yeah <laughs> I don't want to have to remember it, you know, like, especially in Chrome, where it, no matter what computer you go to, when you sign in to your Chrome, to your Gmail, it automatically does all your settings, you know, your passwords and everything transfer across with it. So. I've never had any passwords transfer. Yeah, you have to set it up initially. You go into um, the little spanner tool thing. You go from there, you go into your options. Um, yeah, you go into options. I'm pretty sure I've got it set to sync everything. And then once you... Personal stuff. Yeah, once you go into there, you have to go personal stuff and then you have to sync and you have to actually sign into your... or log into your email account to sync it and then you can tell it to sync passwords and do whatever you want. Yeah, I've, got every, um, I've got everything synced. Encrypt passwords. Yeah. Yeah. 
and then once you go to another system, it um, once you log sign in on that new computer, then it will transfer everything across. So you bookmarks your yeah. usernames, passwords. That's actually why I love Chrome because it now means when I format my system, I haven't got to worry about backing up all that sort of stuff because it That's does it, it automatically. <clears throat> Speaking of uh, of backing up, um, a friend of mine, she's had a bit of a rough trot lately and th- just to top it all off, her phone died the other day. Now she's had that phone for about oh, 18 months or something like that and all her photos, videos, contacts, everything was all on that. It was a Nokia um, N8, I think. And okay. she didn't have any of that backed up. Um, and because it's an all-in-one phone, there's no way to to access any of it remotely. So she's just taken her phone in to get fixed and they informed her that chances are she's going to lose all the data. So it's just a good practice to also get in the habit of backing up um, your your devices as well, not just your phones, but your whether it be your iPad, Android tablets, you know, um, even a lot of things people don't think about, like they have GPSs and they do data logging of their trips and things like that. Um, you know, even stuff like that that you may not think about, but if you want to go to that particular fishing spot again, or that particular whatever it may be again, um, you know, <laughs> you can't if you lose your data. So, as far as I know, all devices have a way to back them up. Um, people with Android phones, or certainly most people I know with Android phones get complacent because just about everything automatically backs up. It syncs everything um, to the cloud, at least in terms of your contacts and anything that's on the actual device itself automatically syncs to your account. Um, But things on your memory card don't, so you can still lose, you know, data um, on your memory cards. Um, so, and iPhones, I know, sync, but only when you hook them up to your computer, yes, I think? Yes, when you, uh, backs up to, uh, iTunes. Yeah. Backs up your <coughs> contacts and SMS, um, trying to think if it does anything else. Oh, you can, you can have it automatically when you connect your phone to the computer, you can have it. If you've got a um, an Apple computer, it can um, automatically open up. Uh, what is it? Um, what's their photo application? I don't even use it. Oh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, you can back up your photos. Comes in. Your... Comes in the iLife pack. Movies. Basically, every every Apple gets a every mm. Apple computer gets it when you buy a new one. Um, Does it work the same on PCs though? It still does the same on PC. Um, like... I think it'll... I'm not sure exactly. It might open up some kind of program and um, try to automatically download it. Um, what else is there? Because I know you, it, you can do a full... You can also do a full backup manually as well. Like, you can click on the button and it'll back everything up. Yep. Um, Android's the same. Most Android devices, whoever the manufacturer is, has their own software for them. HTC doesn't. Oh, not HTC. Samsung. Their backup software, which I can't think of off the top of my head, doesn't uh, doesn't work on Windows 64-bit, which is rather annoying. Um... As far as I know, that's the only one that has that. Oh, actually, I know 
the older Windows phones, Windows 6 or whatever it was, um, the software wouldn't work on 64-bit either. I thought that was quite funny. <laughs> I don't know about the new ones, but yeah, the old ones wouldn't. Um, well, I had um, that HTC HD2 that I had. Mm-hmm. Originally had uh, Windows Mobile 6.5 on it. Yep. And I I use Windows 7 64-bit, and I had to install the mobile sync application. Yep. And that that worked fine. Yeah, I think the later updates, because you would have downloaded that, no doubt. Yeah. Um, yeah, the later updates did, but the earlier versions wouldn't. Um, okay. Because when I first got my HTC, uh, my um, yeah HTC Dopod, it was a Windows phone, and yeah, yep. it wouldn't work on. But once I updated, not the phone, but updated the sync software, it would. Um, so yeah, I mean you've got to back up so much these days. You know, you back up your phone, and if you haven't backed up your phone in six months, the first backup that you do actually do <laughs> will take quite a while um it's going to be a big backup yeah i mean you think like what's an iphone 32 64 gig plus uh 30 32 gig yeah you know and then you got well, i've just put a what size card i've just put a 32 gig i think let me just check 16 gig in my android um, and I I came from a four gig card, you know. So, but actually, it, the good thing about the Android is I just take the card out, throw it in the card reader, and back it up because it's quicker than going through the phone. But uh, there's all different ways of doing it. You can use um, like Wi-Fi sync, so that you every time you walk onto a designated Wi-Fi. So, for example. I'd walk to my home one every time the phone goes into range and my main computer's on, it will automatically sync. So I haven't got to do anything. Um, So there's a few different ways of doing it. You can use things like Titanium Backup Pro on rooted devices, which will back everything up. Programs like uh, Go SMS, which uh, is a third party SMS client, and other. Than the other features it gives you, it backs up all the SMSs and MMSs. So, so yeah, you so you've got your your mobile devices, you've got so like pads and stuff. You got your phones, you've got your GPSs. Don't forget back once you've backed all those up onto your computer, then you've got to back your computer up. <laughs> um, I just finished backing up. Actually, finished last night backing up one point one terabytes onto my uh my online backup which is <laughs> i can't think the name is escaping me at the moment backblaze um is who i've used paying you know, three bucks a month or whatever it is i'm paying and yeah <laughs> it it's taken 78 days i think it was to back it up <laughs> But uh, it backed it up, no problems, you know. So I'm I'm all backed up now. It's all good, and I've just found an old hard drive with about another 150 gig of data that needs to be backed up. So it's time to start again. <laughs> so yeah, so backing up is important. Um, yeah, especially in things what I do and what Glenn does and things like that where we have um, so much data, detached data you know like I'm recording the video and I'm recording the audio but I'm also recording a version online at the same time which is lower quality but I have actually had to resort to that before Um, you know and the thing is fine I've got my videos on live stream or I've got my videos on YouTube or wherever I have them but if say for example YouTube decided to pull my videos down for whatever reason 
because they don't need a reason. You know, they could shut my account. And then, what, if I don't have them on my computer, you know? So, it's not enough that I have to have just a copy of them on my computer. I have to have a backup of that as well. So that if, you know, I lose my main file or what has happened before is I've actually just deleted it (laughs) by accident. (laughs) Um, You know, you do something like that, then if you don't have a backup, you're in all sorts of trouble, you know? Um, That's it. And they're big. I mean, you're talking, you know, several gig of video files after each show, you know? So, but, uh, ah, you know, it's it's one of those things you learn. As I said, you don't think about you don't think about phones and stuff like that until you've lost your data. <laughs> and by then, it's too late. Um, so yeah. Um, I suppose speaking of sort of backing up and and you know preserving your system an important thing to have obviously is a surge protector so if you get power strike you know, lightning strikes or power surges you don't fry your computer but even what's one one step better than that is actually a UPS um, a UPS is an un, un- in, uh, here we go uninterruptible <laughs> power supply um, and it is what it sounds it's basically a glorified battery that when you lose power your computer stays on um, now we have a, a question actually in the chat room from Hero and he wants to know he's been looking around for a while and he wants to know what to look for in a UPS not necessarily what's the best one to buy you know but how do you cut through all the marketing hype and determine what's a good UPS um, which is actually a really good question because <laughs> it's sort of uh, they rate UPS is in weird ways um, and there's no you know market standard on how to do it there is quite a few legitimate ways of doing it some of them rate the battery that's gone in it um, which is fine because you might have a 100 amp hour battery for example which when you do the math is 100 amp hours so it's 1 amp for 100 hours or 100 amps for one hour or anything in between although to get technical most of them have a preferred like a optimal current drain which for example could be 20 amps so its optimum capacity is 20 amps over five hours Um, so a lot of them rate the batteries that go into them Um, a lot of them rate and the, the better way to do it is to rate the actual output of the device because you're effectively going from a 12 volt battery or maybe 24 volt to 12 volt batteries depending on how it's set up to 240 volt um, depending once again on what your computer is you set it you know you might get away with 110 if you've got a, a good power supply but let's say to keep it simple you're going to 240 now to do the maths immediately you know if you're going from a 24 volt to to 40 volt well the time it times that by 10 so if you've got 10 amps at 24 volt you divide by 10 so you've got one amp at 240 volt now seems simple but that's not actually true because the inverter itself that goes into the ups controls the switching of the current the charging of the battery uh the audi- audio the auto switch over so that when you lose power it automatically switches on the battery things like that 
the actual inverters are generally only about 80% efficient. So you lose 20% of that power as well. So when they rate just from the battery, all it's telling you is the capacity of the battery. They're not telling you the actual output of the device. So you're losing, you're losing, you know, and if it's a really inefficient inverter, it could only be 60% efficient. So you could be losing up to 40% just through a poor efficiency inverter. Um, but mainly, I guess, what you're sort of looking for, you, you have to figure out what you want to run. Now, for example, if you're running a laptop or a EPC, Asus E desktop or whatever they call them, they combine all-in-one low-powered systems or an older system itself, they're obviously going to use less power than what a gaming system uses. So you, you kind of need to figure out, like if it's for an office system, for example, would have a different UPS to what your server would have or your little, you know, computer that sits in the corner and just surfs the internet is going to have a different UPS to what your media center or your gaming system is going to have. Um, and the other thing is too, if you've got to figure out if your power supply will work on 220 volt or it only wants 240 or if it'll auto switch between 110 and 240, which is actually a better way of doing it because, um, because you're actually, if you can run at 110, then you get, you've, you're gaining an advantage because you're not losing as much through the the power conversion. But let's just say, for example, and then you got to decide also if you want it to run your monitors, monitor, monitors, um, you know, do you want it to run what else on that? Do you want it to keep running your router? Because quite often, you know, if you lose power, your internet will go down, obviously, but if you keep your modem powered up, there's a fair chance, unless the exchange has lost power, that, you know, you still have internet. So, let's just say, for example, we're going to run the average desktop PC with the average 19-inch... 19-inch isn't really an average anymore. Average 21-inch <laughs> desktop monitor. Um... And you've probably got your external hard drive plugged in. And to be honest, the modem's probably plugged into the same power board. So is the, hub, the router hub, probably. Um, your printer's probably plugged into that power board as well. You know, and so are your speakers, because you just haven't thought about changing, you know, what they're plugged into. Um, so just on that sort of basic setup which is nothing you know nothing special the base unit you're looking for will be an 800 voltage amps um and that's assuming nothing else is going to go so you know um and other things come into it as well depending on what ups model it is depends on whether or not the batteries are replaceable keep in mind that batteries are probably ideally you change in a commercial environment uh you know like an office environment or a server environment you would change the batteries out every 12 months uh, at home every, ideally minimum or well, maximum of three years you change them i mean i know people who don't <laughs> and like six years later there'll be a blackout and they can't understand why the computer stopped um or it you know, starts beeping yeah or continually beeps and you don't know why but they're they've got what they call a uh, sla battery in most of them which is a sealed lead acid battery um which is generally the same as those you know those super cheap booster packs jumper packs um things like that most of those have a sealed lead acid battery in them the reason they use those is they don't leak um and 
the good ones will last a long period of time. UPSs generally don't have good quality battery in them, and they also don't generally have deep cycle batteries in them. Um, so if you get, you might get an expensive UPS, but it might have really crappy batteries. So there's something to look for. Make sure that you can change your batteries. And the other thing you've got to take into consideration is how long you want it to run for. I mean, generally, they they say they only really allow 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and that, you know, 10 to 15 minutes of runtime, it's, it's assumed that it's long enough to back up whatever it is you're doing and close the system down. Um, you know, so if you want it to last longer than that, then obviously you need a bigger one again. The, to be completely honest, the best UPS, if you're even remotely technically minded, is one you build yourself. Um, because you can put as many batteries on it as you want. You can have it sitting on float charge all the time on a proper charger that actually floats at 14.5 volts to keep the batteries in good condition. Um, and all you need to do is run a a thousand watt um, relatively cheap it hasn't got to be super high quality but something's fairly decent you know $150, $200 inverter from even something from eBay you know a good thousand thousand watt inverter as long as it's a, a sine wave inverter um, and you can literally just keep adding batteries every week when you get paid spend another thirty dollars on a on a you know 40 amp hour battery and just hook it up <laughs> so realistically you can make it as big as you want um you can have a wake up time yeah you could and i was playing actually the other day with just to get a bit of an idea with that i had cheap 50 amp hour batteries which are realistically probably 20 amp hour batteries um i had a cheap inverter and a bad badly built cheap power supply because it's all stuff i had laying around and a um pentium dual core which are known to be power hungry and i still managed to get nearly an hour runtime with just you know twenty dollars worth of parts so you know you could i mean yes you can buy ups by all means you know there's uh, apc there's upsonic there's oh, there's heaps of different brands um of power of ups's you can they range from um one small enough to actually fit into your cd-rom bay in your computer they'll fit in there um they're completely useless but they will they range <laughs> from that size right through to big server modules you know and to, i mean they're okay but to can be completely honest the best way to do it is to make one yourself it's simple it, it's a lot cheaper um and it's much easier to monitor because you can actually keep an eye on all your batteries and check everything so you know and yes as pa says in the chat room if you're really clever you can have a four kilovolt um a 4k va generator as a backup <laughs> i think he means if you're really rich you can have a 4k va <laughs> generator as a backup <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't know how much cleverness goes into that i think that's mainly cost i think you got I think it goes into how you steal it. Yeah, well, or who you borrow it from. Yeah. <laughs> Why, right? Why don't you just take one of those Nightworks ones that they power the big floodlights with, <laughs> hook up to one of those, and drag that home? <laughs> you know. So, although I mean, actually, you have to be careful with that sort of thing as well, because I do know people take generators with them when they're camping and things like that. Um, you just have to be careful that they put out a sine wave, uh, a digital sine wave, um, and not just a 
a 240 volt AC, which is fine for running drills and power tools and um, TVs and things like that that aren't fussy. They'll run fine. But some PCs, um, power supplies, like for laptops, things that are sensitive to voltage, uh, if they're not a good quality inverter or a good quality generator, it can it can kill them. Um, so you do have to be a little bit careful there. Just make sure that you you know sort of what you you're looking for. Um, but other than that, I mean, generators are designed to run lighting and power tools effectively, and any generator will do that. Um, you just have to be a little bit the the other way to sort of get around it, if you have got uh an inverter like a thousand watt inverter that you hook up to a battery or whatever and you've got a generator but the generator puts out a dodgy 240 volt current most generators put out 12 volts as well so it's a slightly inefficient way of doing it but if you've got a generator you can hook up the 12 volts output to your battery and hook your inverter up to that and that'll give you a nice clean power feed um, and of course you can run solar panels and all that sort of stuff but yeah I mean in terms of UPS's you've got to figure out how much power you're drawing how long you want to draw it for what you want to run with it um, how easy it's going to be to service and replace batteries things like that what sort of warranty they give you on the UPS because a lot of them will only give you a 12 month warranty because the actual boards themselves will only last that long and you generally can't replace the controller boards on them so you know as I said if, if you're remotely even remotely handy with a multimeter and a bit of common sense you can make your own inverter um, which A is cheaper B is generally going to be better quality and it's going to be much easier to maintain. So, it probably just confused everybody more than it helped, but too <laughs> bad. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> See, now you've got to send me an email saying, now I'm really confused. Can you explain it differently? And then I will. See? I do it deliberately. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, How much yes. did you expect to pay for a UPS? Uh, see, the other thing is too, you've got straight UPSs, then you've got UPSs with surge protectors, then you've got power conditioners. That's the other thing I should have mentioned too. If you live in an area that's a fair way out from the power station or has what they call dirty power where you get a lot of brown outs or a lot of surges or you notice your lights flicker um, get yourself a power conditioner what it basically is is a big bank of capacitors that hold a steady charge so when you get power fluctuations it takes those fluctuations out and just gives you a nice clean power um, it's just better on your equipment and of course you guys know what surge protectors are but how much would I pay for a UPS well, <laughs> how long's a piece of string? I mean, for something... <laughs> I was trying to think. I'd probably, for what I've got in front of me, would probably need at least a 2,000 VA UPS um, to run my stuff for probably 15 or 20 minutes, which would be enough if I'm in the middle of a video encoding or something like that that would be a long enough period of time for me to finish what I'm doing um, and I guess how much to pay comes down to what brand it is I mean you can for a 2000 VA you can get cheaper sort of no name brands you know for 200 and then you things like your Upsonics that are uh, uh, sort of they're a cheap brand but they're a known brand you know you're looking at 500 um, but then you go to things like your APC which are a good quality brand 
but you're paying for them. You know, you're looking at $2,000. So, um, so you yeah. Guys, just put one in the chat room. It's a 1500 VA, 830 watt uh, line interactive UPS with LCD 269 at JCAR. Yeah, which, you know, you just, the only thing you're looking at in that is um, the quality of the batteries and things like that. And that really, that's the difference between the good ones and the cheap ones, is the quality of the boards and the quality of the batteries. Um, a lot of the cheap ones don't give you warning that they're going to go flat. They just stop working, <laughs> which is just as useless as not, you know, you might as well not have one. Yeah. Um and a lot of the, the better ones come with a USB port so you can plug your com- into your computer and then you preset a limit. So once, say, the UPS gets to 20%, then it automatically shuts the computer down. Um, you know, so... I'm just trying to find this one that... Uh, that PA put in the chat room. Uh, I'm just, I just don't have any success finding it. Not online, anyway. But, we put um, a link in there. Oh, here we go. But it hasn't, Three. it hasn't fully linked it. Here's a 900 watt. Um, well, there's a 1500, 830. And see, this is the other thing that doesn't make a lot of sense. You've got a 1500 VA 900 watt. Or a 1500 VA 830 watt, which is telling you that the system itself is capable of putting out 1500 VA. The difference is the batteries they've used, because one lot of batteries are only good for 830 watt, and the other batteries are good for 900 watt. So, to make the price, what's the price difference? The price difference is about 30 bucks. So to, to make that 30 to pro, 30 dollars difference they've put cheaper batteries in it but uh yeah so there's this one that is said the 1500 830 um has software compatible so it'll automatically shut your system down once it gets down has three power outlets um so generally i don't know in this particular one but in most of them you can control each outlet individually uh, batteries, 12 volts, 2... No, it's only got 9 amp hour batteries in it. It's only got small batteries in it. So you could... That's surprising. I would have thought it had bigger batteries than that. But yeah, you know, 240 bucks down from 369 You know, for 240 it's certainly... If nothing else, it's a good way to... Um, to protect your main systems. And y- you think too for businesses, like y- you might have your main till... Um, it's always good to have a, even if it's only 10 minutes, 10 minutes of battery, it's enough to back up your, you know, do you rattle off your end of day and open up your till drawer so you can take your, your money out, you know, so for 250 bucks, it's not a bad investment really. Um, then this one actually, uh, what's it got? Input output voltages, temperature monitoring, battery capacity, output load, UPS failure. Do uh, most of them have a USB port on them? A lot of them do. <laughs> Although, a lot of them don't actually work. Um, I've seen a lot of the cheaper ones on eBay. They say they've got a UPS okay. thing, but they don't actually come with any software to make them do anything. <laughs> So, you've got to be a little bit careful of that too. Just because they have a USB port doesn't mean they're, con- they're controllable. So, see I'm just looking at the smaller versions in this, of this same, the same UPS. Um, as we said, the 830 had 9 amp hour batteries, two of. The 900 
has 12 amp hour, two 12 hour, 12 amp hour, no, no, two 9 amp hour batteries. So it's actually got the same size batteries in them. That's odd. Hmm. Must be a slightly more efficient. And the description's wrong too, because according to the description, it's supplied with two 7 amp hour batteries. <laughs> so. And then the cheap one's just got uh, 7 amp hour. You know what they've done? They've copied the same description off the cheap one and put it on all three. <laughs> so. Yeah. So that's what that's what you want, you know. It's and your first one's probably going to be trial and error. And to be honest, it's always better to buy a bigger one than you think you're going to need. So do the maths, add 50% and start there so who is ringing me go away um <laughs> so yeah uh what about buying a um what are those you know like uh wattage meters to t see how much power you're using yeah the ones that plug into the the power points the instant read yeah. ones. yeah and then you plug everything into that yeah, um, it's handy, especially if you're running everything off one power point. Um, you don't want to go more than 10 amps, obviously, um, which is, um, what, 240 watt, if I can remember Ohm's Law. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically plug one of those in. They're not much. They're only, you know... 20 or $30, I think. Yeah, something like that. Um, twenty four hundred is it PA? <laughs> there you go. I don't remember Ohm's law. Um, yeah, you know, you buy one, throw it in, and I oh, know you're just showing off. <laughs> so I can't do maths <laughs> in my head. Um, yeah, buy one of those, throw it in, and that's actually a good way of doing. It. And turn your computer on, power everything up the way you normally would. And actually watch that surge when you first turn it on. When your f system first comes on, when your monitors first come on, there's actually quite a big surge there. But you don't really have to worry about that too much for the UPS because the system will be on when the UPS kicks in. So all you want to do is look at your float, um, look at your float, your average levels that everything on uses. And then start turning things off and say, well, okay, I don't need my printer hooked up. I don't need, you know, my powered USB hub. I don't need, you know, the foot warmer. I don't need the air conditioner. I don't, <laughs> you know, I don't need all this stuff. <laughs> I don't need the, the USB powered cup holder and the USB powered, you know, back massager and the whatever else you can get USB powered these days. Um I don't need both oh, my that monitors. Oh, that's awesome from the other week. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the, uh, the, the, oh, what was Inductive. that? Tablet, tablet kitchen. Tablet kitchen. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't need, you know, you only need one monitor, not two. Um, you can turn off your external hard drive. So go through it and gradually turn things off until you get to a level that you're happy with. So say, let's just say, for argument's sake, you're using a thousand watts with everything on, and then you use five hundred watts with everything except the bare necessities turned on or Compute, turned off. Computer sorry. monitor. Yeah, one say one monitor and just the case. And so that, let's say that's five hundred watts. So what you might want to do is you might want to get a one thousand um, a one thousand watt thing which will UPS which will run at 50% load which is about what they rated for but you have got that little bit of extra overhead so that say you do have everything on and you're actually not home at that time you're you know picking the kids up from school or whatever it is you do and you get a blackout well the UPS is still going to be powerful enough to run everything that's on um, for at least enough time 
for that 10 minute window to at least initiate shut down and, and shut everything down so so yeah so I think that's that's confused everyone sufficiently um there's a whole nother topic there confused. about hey if they weren't confused before they should be now yeah that's right that'll teach you to ask me a question <laughs> there's a whole nother topic there on uh inverters and and things like that um and th- there's actually just a quick thing there too if you do want to run when you're out camping and you, or you're on off-grid power and you want a more efficient way to run a PC you can have a normal PC nothing different about it but just buy a car power supply um, they're a little the little power supply about the same size as a, a cigarette box um, you take your big chunky power supply out you plug this one in and they're actually designed to run on 13 volts from your car so you can quite easily run a normal PC but because you're not converting from 240 volts back down to 12 volt you're just going because your average computer is only 12 volt well you've got 12 volt rail 5 volt rail 3.3 volt rail I think your three common voltages so there's no reason to go especially if you're running on 12 volt power to run an inverter to go to 240 volt to go back down to 12 volt it doesn't make any sense so you just run straight 12 volt to 12 volt and you know they're 40 bucks or something so just another efficiency tip um which of course makes it real easier to run a ups because you don't need all the other stuff you can just run a whole heap of batteries and they sit on a charger and then when you lose power they just keep running <laughs> <laughs> so um so yeah I think that's about it for that I just wanted to mention too uh droidsdownunder.com go there check it out um he's one of our listeners who's decided to start up a forum um f- to go hand in hand with our new android podcast that we've just started as well um which once again there won't be any this week because um dt is preoccupied so uh yeah go to droidsdownunder.com and check that out and i think you can i think now i was going to actually check just crash if, for me <laughs> don't say that <laughs> it's possible um it's literally only just started it I think a but week ago. But it's gone to the Google cache. Oh, lovely. Um, no, he's just... Uh, the, you, hopefully, you should be able to sign up soon, so show your support. Um, you send me emails if you want. Um, you can get a hold of Frosty, F-R-0-5-T-Y, at Twitter. Correct. <laughs> I don't even have it written down. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing um, well. Yeah. Of course, uh, you can get a hold of Disgruntled Tech or we'll Steve. Take the training at... wheels off soon. <laughs> no, don't do that. I'll crash and burn. <laughs> um, you can get a hold of uh, Disgruntled Tech or Steve on uh, Disgruntled underscore Tech T E K um, on the Twitters. If you want to get a hold of them in longhand format, just shoot an email to uh, tbt at the, tbt at thesecrethub dot com. You can get a hold of all of us there. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Mr. Tompkinson or at Aussie TBT if you wish. You can visit the TBT homepage on talkbacktech.com. Um, at the moment, some of the pages gone flaky. The YouTube thing stopped working. I don't know what's happened there. Um, so you can also go to live.thesecrethub.com and check out pre recorded videos there. Or you can go to just search um, YouTube for Talkback Tech. And you'll find all the Secret Hub and Talkback Tech, and you'll find some our podcasts up there as well. Uh, and if you must, you can go to the Facebook fan page and tell us how much you love us or hate us. Usually hate us, but you know. Um, <laughs> alrighty, I think unless you had anything else to add. 
That'd be a no. No, I have nothing else. <laughs> Um, I just want to thank Frosty and Hero. Uh, not Frosty. What's his name? PA. Poo Lennox. Well, I can thank Frosty too, I suppose, but he's like IRL. Thanks not... once again. <laughs> yeah, thanks now. Get off. Um, yeah, PA oh. and um, Hero for helping us out in the chat room. And um, thank you listeners for listening. And I guess on that note, I shall see you all next week. See you later. Thanks for thanks for Hero for the question. Yeah, absolutely. Bye. <laughs>